Imagine where we would be now compared to where we are. I'm sorry, imagine how we would be without him compared to how we are now. What we needed was a covenant with him. Before there was two covenants made, I'm only going to talk about the old covenant right now, or the, the first arrangement that was made between God and man. We're, we're not going to talk about the second one right now. We'll talk about that possibly next Sunday because Thursday we have a guest. But what I want you to know is why we have him and why we have an opportunity to be with God today. Why we have an opportunity to have freedom. We would have bondage without God. How did the people operate without God previously? They always blew it. Does anybody here like just blowing it? Just, just messing everything up. Listen, you're looking at a person who used to do that all the time. You used to, do you still do that? Or you used to? <laughs> I used to too. I used to always blow it. And always do the wrong thing. And it always brought me to the wrong place. I'm happy to say today I'm in the right place. I'm so excited to be in the right place. When I got up this morning, I'm like, I get to get dressed and, and I like putting a suit on for the Lord. I'm a priest, so I wear a suit. I wore a suit before I was preaching, but no, I wore a shirt and tie before, but when I started preaching, I started wearing a jacket. But I got a place. I have a place now to come and worship the Lord. I have a place to come right here, right, right down the street from my house. I can come and praise God because of all the things he's done in my life. I know where my life would be without God today. So it makes me think about that covenant that was made that developed a relationship between God and man. And if we didn't have God, I dare say we'd be... First of all, when you didn't have God in your life, just think for a second individually. You don't have to, you know, say anything. But just think about how your life was without God. If you don't have God now, let me know and we can talk about it. Because that's what this church is all about. Is establishing that covenant with you and God. Establishing that deal. See, the Lord made a deal. He said if we would worship him and him alone, he would be there for us. Now understand, some people think that that's, that's not how it went down. Because he died on the cross for our sins, just because he did that, that deal was made for us and all we have to do is accept him and we have access to that deal. But that's not what the Bible says. And I'm here to teach you what the Bible says. The Lord made a deal, but you have to be a part of that. The covenant is between, you know, two entities. Not just one person. I can't make my own deals with God. And we're going to talk about that. But right now we have to understand that the, that the Lord made a deal for us. And if we will do what the Lord said, which is to serve Him and Him alone... We have access to protection. We have access to grace and mercy. We have access to love. Does anybody want that from the Lord? Or you just want to get beat down. Every time you mess up, every, every time something goes bad, you just want to be beat down and slapped around. Who wants that? What we want is to be treated with mercy. We want forgiveness. We want understanding. And we got that with the Lord because of the deal he made. Now he made that deal with Abraham and we're gonna go over that. The other thing I'm gonna talk about later on in the sermon is the idea that we try to make deals with God. God if you let me do this then I'll come serve you. If you give me what I want I'll submit to you. God I want to make a deal. Let me have some more. Let me just do this one more time. Or let me have this in my life and still have you. I don't believe that's how the Lord set it up, and we're going to talk about that. I've got a whole list of scriptures here that I want to go over. Some are, are, are connected. But I want you to understand about this arrangement, about this deal that was made. And that deal was called a covenant. In Genesis chapter 9 verse 9, it says, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. So God is talking to Abraham saying, look, I'm going to make a deal with you. I'm going to make a covenant, an arrangement with you. And I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people. God's making an arrangement for his people. And it says, for him 
and his seed for generations. You know who that means? That means you. That means all of you right now are seeds of Abraham. And he is uh, the four, the three fathers, just say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They call them forefathers, but that was a little joke. I don't know if you got it. If we go on to verse 11, it says, And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more uh, be a flood to destroy the earth. Now, God made a covenant with Abraham. But right here he's talking about, and actually in the previous scripture, talking about his covenant with Noah. And we're going to get to Abraham next. But with Noah, we're talking about the time right before... Um, or right after the flood took place and Noah found land, he told them that I'm going to make a covenant with you. Now remember, it was the responsibility of Noah and his family to replenish the earth. So when we're talking about his seed after him, uh, at this point we're talking about Noah. Verse 12 says, And God said, There is a token of the covenant which I made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. What does perpetual mean? Ongoing generations. We're not talking about just that generation. Verse 13 says, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Still, we're talking about the time of Noah. I actually learned this from someone else after I'd been going to church for quite some time. What bow is he talking about here? He's talking about a rainbow. And that when the rainbow would go up, it would be a symbol of the covenant between God and Noah and his generations. Uh, verse 15, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. So what Noah is saying is that I'm never again going to flood the earth like I did in the times of Noah. But he's making a covenant. There is an agreement that's going on between God and Noah, who is, his family is going to be replenishing the earth. Uh, verse 16, and we're still in Genesis 9. And the, bow, and the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. The Lord has made a covenant with us and the creatures of the earth. That is the reason why we have relationship with God. Verse 17, And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh upon the earth. So that first series of scriptures is all concerning the covenant between God and Noah. Now remember, Noah once again had to replenish the earth. So this is the seed. This is the beginning of a new generation. The old, all of the old generation was destroyed by the flood. Now, Noah is still the seed of Abraham. So it's still connected because Abraham was the forefather. Now, if you go to Genesis 15, 18. Now we're going to talk about a different covenant. This one was with Abraham. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham saying unto thy seed have I given this land from the river Euphrates unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Uh, Genesis 17 and 2 says, I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Genesis 17, 4. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Genesis 17, 7 says, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Who's that? That's us. Verse 9, And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, Thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Remember we talked about that last week. 
And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt, betwixt, I didn't even know that was a word, betwixt me and you. So we have an ongoing situation here. There is a covenant with Noah, and now there's a covenant with Abraham. And he is saying, look, I am going to be your God, and I am going to establish your seed, which again is us. So we have a relationship with God because of his arrangement with Abraham. Now Abraham was a Jew, and the Jewish people were the chosen people. Don't ask me why. You know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean that the I think that they're any better than anybody else. But God decided to choose the Israelites to make them his people. And later on, he included all of us, which would be called Gentiles, to be part of that covenant. So we start out with the idea of the Jewish people were going to be the Israelites, were going to be the chosen people. And after that, we were included in that covenant. But God made that decision Listen, I, don't, I can't imagine a world where God would just say, you know what, I created you, now go do your own thing. I mean, you take a bunch of kids and you put them in a room and say, go do your own thing without the supervision of an adult, what happens? All I have is a bunch of mess. But God created us, made a decision that he was going to make that covenant between him and aren't you glad he did that? Aren't you glad that God not only created, created you, but made a situation where he was going to be your father. He was going to be your caretaker and guide your life. Now the sad part, and this is the part where the church comes in, is too many of us disregard that covenant. We disregard God. We disregard the things that he wants from us and we disregard the ordinances that he gives us. Let's see what the word has to say about that in Exodus chapter 19 verse 5. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5. It says, now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. Then ye shall be peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Everybody say covenant. We're talking about the idea of there is a requirement. It says here if. Everybody say if. If is a conditional word, church. And I'm trying to get, listen, this is not popular. I'm going to tell you right now. What I'm about to teach you is not popular. It's much more popular to believe that God died on the cross. He died for me. Therefore, I have instant access to what he did for me because he did it. And it's for me. That's the common belief today. But that's not what the Bible says. So I want to teach what the Bible says regardless of how popular it is. Can I do that? Because I can't, I can't decide to teach something that's more popular if it's not in the Word of God. The Word of God says, if you will obey my voice indeed. So that means that there is a requirement to enter into a covenant with God. To have access to that covenant with God. You just being someone who says, well I acknowledge there's a God and I know the Bible's okay or the Bible's real and, and, and I accept God. I accept him as my savior. That's not enough. And that's not the word of God. The word of God says, if you obey. You know what that means? There is a prerequisite. There is something that's required of you before you can enter into that covenant with God. And that is to obey him. But you know, we're not good at obey. <laughs> we're not good at do what you're told. We're good at let me do it my way. God, I'm going to make a deal with you. Let's do this my way. I'm sorry, but we can't make that kind of deal. God made a deal with us saying, look, I will be your God if you will obey me. That's the deal. And we can't change the deal. We don't have that authority. If we obey, we have covenant. If we do not obey, do we still have covenant with God? Oh boy, that's, that's, that's a dangerous teaching. 